I am Wood Glue, and this is the Pacific Crest Trail. This is at mile uh, 496, and I just climbed up uh, a big road there that I call the Walk of Shame. And the reason why is a year ago today, I was uh, sitting right here on this bench, and uh, I just came walking down off of the, the trail right there. And there was about two feet of snow, three feet of snow in the drifts, and it was just crazy. I had walked from mile 486 to here, 496, so um, 10 miles over the span of uh, one night to get here, and I was just moving too slow to uh, keep on going, so I bowed out and uh, walked down the uh, road of shame here. Now this is my third attempt at this uh, section of the trail. Uh, last December, I had a trip all planned to come up here and. Uh, knock this out. This is a gap I have from 496 to 535. And um, there was a big uh, snowstorm right at Christmas time. And I was doing the trip a week after that. And I didn't want to uh, take a chance on the same thing happening again. Now a year later, I'm a little lighter. My pack's a little lighter. I've got my micro spikes, which I didn't have uh, a year ago. Got my rain gear because we got some rain in the forecast and it may well uh, start coming down here and we'll see if we can do it again. I've got a plan to uh, get to camp at uh, mile 511 tonight and um, that will be uh, kind of the bottom of the the hill you know after that wake up in the morning and uh, 535 is uh, a lot of flat aqueduct walking so from 511 to uh, 535 should be pretty easy going big mile day tomorrow big mile day today so we'll see how this all fares my fingers crossed you know, I can finally 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 get this section of the trail done knocked off the list clouds we're just pouring rain out of them only like one valley away from where I was so I put on all my rain gear and uh, then the Sun came out <laughs> so what are you gonna do Thank you. 
I'm finally dry. <laughs> I got into the into the tent, took all my wet clothes off and stuff and left them out in the vestibule and hung up some hung up my shirt to dry. But um Backpacking in the rain is uh, something I used to be afraid of. You know, I was really concerned about it, and really, it's uh, it's all about just having the right gear. And I think this is probably the first trip I've ever had where I had the right gear. You know, I did this about a year ago, my Laguna Mount Laguna trip, coming on um, mile 40 to 77, and. Um, I didn't have a very good rain jacket then, and I had a poncho. This time I've got the the uh, cover for the backpack, and I had new uh, rain pants and rain jacket, and made all the difference in the world. I mean, I was I was wet. The front of my shirt was was wet because um, I had my jacket unzipped for a while. But other than that, pants are pretty dry and uh, got into the tent and got my quilt all set up. This is my normal backpacking quilt, but I also brought a, uh, an extra, this is just one of those Costco um, down quilts. And I love this thing, man. It weighs 15 ounces, and so it's really gotta be worth to, to bring it, because then I add that to the, the quilt, the backpacker's quilt weight, and <clears throat> it really starts adding up but it's almost a three pound sleep system, not including the, the air mattress. But got all set up and shouldn't be too, too cold tonight. I think it'll be in the mid thirties, somewhere in there, which is uh, doable. And it's, uh, it's raining and I love the rain. I love it. Camping in the rain, there's nothing like it. Got my dinner cooking up a, uh, Packet gourmet ostentatious tortilla soup. Probably one of my favorite meals that that they have. And um, I will see you in the morning. Well, good morning. It's uh, six six ten right now, and I'm digging out of camp. This was my camp last night. You can kind of see my uh, my dry spot. <laughs> it was raining when I got in here last night, so it's um. It wasn't too, too cold last night. It probably got down to mid thirties, something like that. And uh, I was pretty comfortable. The, uh, went down last night and got water. I forgot to tell you that. And uh, it was quite a climb down the mountain to a, a spring. The spring was dry, but uh, luckily it had been raining. And so there was water in the creek right there next to it. Big winds all night long, big winds. I mean, it's probably too dark to see, but you can see the clouds moving really, really fast here. And uh, the uh, tarp tent did okay with that. That's probably the biggest wind it's ever experienced. So the PCT crosses a road right there. That's uh, mile 511, and there's a couple water caches uh, right there, and just uh, several one-gallon bottles of water. And um, <clears throat> I'm all, just a little over an hour in, so we made it all the way to 511 from 508. Been hauling the mail, and uh, basically walked down off of that ridge. It's so pretty easy to move fast, going in the downhill direction. Today is a big mile day. We are headed all the way to 535, so do the math. Hence the early start. I uh, got a buddy of mine who is gonna be meeting me at uh, 535 at four o'clock. So we've got, uh, what is it, 27 miles to go before four o'clock. So here we go. And the uh, critters out on the trail. There's a great big, huge track. I think it was 
Probably a mountain lion. It didn't look like anything else to me. But uh, glad I didn't see that dude. Next stop is uh, Hiker Town. Top off my water there before I hit the aqueduct, and that's at mile 517. So, trucking right along. traversing eastward right now and uh, we'll do that for a good four or five miles before we start heading down to the flat and uh, when you traverse on the PCT you don't always stay at the same topo line you kind of climb up real steep climb down real steep that type of thing so hopefully I could pick up the speed when I get down into the flats So we're uh, three hours in now and it's uh, still averaging about 2.3 miles per hour. So it's just been uh, really tough with the uphills and you know, really steep stuff. And then you know, down here you can see the, the trail that I just came down. And so now it's time to go back up again, up and down, up and down, up and down. Just a section hiker though. Oh, okay. And I put just in quotes, just a section hiker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I stopped in for some water and give oh. you a donation. Oh, geez, that's, that's nice. You gonna stay well or? No, I'm gonna hike up to 535 and meet a buddy. 535, oh, 535, uh, Cottonwood Creek Bridge? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that's the plan. All right. But um, I just found your faucet over there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there's a few of them around. That one's got a hose on it. I don't know. If, inside the garage, there's a, uh, a sink with no hose on it. Oh, really? But, you know, I'll, I'll use that faucet. That's fine. Yeah, okay. And I'll give you one of these. Oh. oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so you think it'd probably get there in about two hours. There's, there's water up there, but you, there? if your buddy's coming, you don't need it. Yeah. How many uh, liters are you taking with you? Um, only a liter and a half. So just top off. Yeah. No, I'll have three to get there. Oh, you have three to get there? Yes, but I'll just take a little here. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Bob, thanks for being here for everybody. Oh, sure. Everybody <laughs> loves this place. So are you going to be doing the whole trail sometime? Or? Um, I've. This is closing a big gap I have. I've done most of Southern California now. We have. Okay. Close to 500 miles of it. So... So your buddy knows how to get up there the easy way, right? One step in the street. Oh, I just dropped a pin and gave it to him, so he'll. Oh, okay. He'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because that's fairly easy if you know how to get there. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you kindly. Oh, sure. I I 
trying to get out of the wind. Blocked by the uh, aqueduct pipe. But, uh, when I was in a hiker town, that guy Bob told me that uh, it's five miles to, uh, or five hours rather, to uh, 535. And I did some quick math and that's only the case if you're moving over three miles per hour. So I picked up the pace here and it's still a little too soon to tell um, how, uh, how quick I'm going. But we'll see. the uh, cool part is there's only 14 or 15 more miles to go. So definitely a big mile day. into the into here so this is the only place in the world around here where you can uh, duck out of the wind and uh, I'm gonna in the hike here you know we got a uh, got a lot more miles to do to get out to uh, 430 or 535 but um, just won't, uh, just won't happen today, you know, with all the time that's uh, left in the day, and I have to work tomorrow, so it's, uh, it's just blasting wind, man. It's uh, unbelievable. So, all in all, it's a 31-mile trip, and um, I just called my buddy for the bow-out plan and asked him to... Uh, pick me up at a different spot so he's gonna do that and I'm definitely glad it's been uh, it's been really really cool to uh, to be out here and hike in the rain and stuff like that but um, just don't have the time left in the day to make it all the way up to uh, 535 I'm 10 miles shy of that about I'm not exactly sure where I'm at but um that's gonna be uh putting me there well after 8 p.m 9 p.m something like that and I still got a two and a half hour drive to get home so no good um this will leave a stupid little 10 mile gap up here for me and uh, this is my third attempt and I just uh can't seem to get it done first part of this hike i got 10 miles in and then i bowed out and now i got 31 more miles and leaving 10 to go so it's just uh, gonna require a fourth fourth trip to get up here and do it if you like that video hit the subscribe button and uh, put a comment down below and let me know what you uh what you think about this section if you've been on it or if you're researching it or something else.